No, I, I wouldn't buy a kit because I'm not a child, and I wouldn't wear a kit in public. But again, because I'm not a professional oh, you, footballer. What, you'd never wear a you'd never wear a replica shirt or anything like that. No, of course not. I'm a, I'm not a professional footballer, and I'm not a child, so I wouldn't wear. <laughs> I wouldn't what is wear. It, oh, is that so? You've got a proper rule, like don't wear it if no. you're an adult. You can't wear a football shirt. No, of course what, not. What if you want to show support for your, for your team and, and stuff like that? Yeah, but you don't have to play fancy dress to show support for your team, do you? I found it really weird. You know, I, w- I went to the game in Dortmund, you know, the England-Holland and uh, England Holland game. Yeah. And everybody, all the all the comments, all social media, everybody was saying how wonderful the Dutch support was. It's amazing, a sea of orange. Look how they've turned the yellow wall orange. Isn't it brilliant? I thought, these are grown men playing fancy dress. <laughs> grown men walking about in wigs and orange T-shirts, orange socks, orange trousers. Would you get, would you get face paint? Would you no, get England face paint? Or no, 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 like of that? course not. Of course no. not. It was a really, what, it's a oh, really, what, really weird outlook. What's, what's the cut-off point? 12. 12. <laughs> 12. 12. 12 years old. Um, and are you ever allowed to get your own name on the back? No, you... As a child, you yeah. can have any name you want on the back. Of course. Okay. Of course. As a child, yeah. my da- my daughter has a Clementine five, and oh, she's nice. got number five. That's not nice. not as a homage to Michael Essien. She's got <laughs> she's got number five because she is five. Okay. So that's her that's her that's her that's her reasoning Brilliant. for having five I'm on sorry, the back. I'm just imagining your little girl going, "Yeah, I want it for Essien." Yeah, Essien. Yeah, it's a homage. It's a homage to the great man, the Bison. <laughs> uh, so, do you know? What? I don't quite agree with that. I think you can wear a, we can wear a shirt up to a point. Though. I agree I that you would agree. I knew you would think this. <laughs> And I think what you're doing is you're validating my point more. No, I knew why, why? Because I'm not a no, sartorial man. No, you're the kind of guy that would wear a football kit. I reckon <laughs> that you would love the idea. You're the kind of guy that I reckon wears a football kit. I can imagine you watching an England goal on the telly and throwing a pint glass. No, I like, can you know imagine. What? I don't go you, that far. You're I don't not, go that but far. But you're not a million miles away from that. No, I'm, I'm dangerously close. You're dangerously, I'm dangerously close. close to a pint. But do you, so do you think it's act, uh, like totally acceptable I for grown men to wear football kits? I think it's out absolutely public? fine. Wow. But but do you know what's funny? I now can't think of when the cutoff point. I think it's forty. Twelve. I think it's forty. I think. Do you know what it is? All right. Put it Why this forty? Way. I don't mind. Those, all right, all right. What about? I don't mind a retro shirt. I don't mind a retro shirt at, at all, actually. Mm. But it's when you, it's when you kind of see the the kind of middle aged men wearing that season's kit. And they've got a twenty-one-year-old's name on the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's when it's just a bit yes, strange. Yes, I know. I always, I always yeah. find that weird as well. Like, yeah. like it's some some fifty-three-year-old from Guildford <laughs> wearing a Chelsea kit with Batshuayi on the back. Oh, like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you dressing like this? Oh, give us a text on that. Eight ten eighty-nine. When's the cut-off point? When's the cut-off point? For I think the vast majority of people on this it doesn't happen. Do you think often. they'll agree with you on this? Twelve years old is a cut-off point. I think they might say that it's older than 12, but I think most normal people think that wearing football kits when you're an adult and you're not a professional footballer is weird. I'm very, very interested to, to find out. Uh, a bit later on, Rory, of course, will be uh, speaking about uh, all the latest transfer news. Arsenal looking pretty exciting. They've got, um, uh, it looks like they're going to be getting Calafiori through the door. Had a very impressive Euros, despite the fact that Italy didn't. Uh, no, he, he shone, didn't he? He did shine. Yeah. He did shine at the back and, and looks like he'll be able to fix that that left back problem that, that they've been having. I just want a brief um, shout from you on this because we'll get into more detail on it later. But I asked, I asked the other two this as well, actually, Ade and Gabby. How much more business do you feel that Arsenal need to do if they want to win the title? Not much. Not much. I mean, what did they finish last season? They finished two points clear. Two points behind, sorry. Two points mm. behind of Man, uh, Man City. So they did launch a serious bid for the league. They launched a sustained bid for the league. They were ultimately outdone by two points, which is most certainly not insurmountable. So I don't think they need to do much work. But no. what's interesting with regard to Arsenal is when people, when you ask people, where do you think Arsenal needs strength and what do you think the answer is? There's no obvious, there's no obvious glaring issue in their squad. Some people will say they need to elevate the left-back option. Other people say they need a centre-forward. Other people say they need to have more options maybe on the left wing. There isn't that obvious glaring error yeah. in their squad that stopped them winning the league last year, which actually makes it more difficult to resolve. Mm. Because they, they were second. The, the the for me a bit of a lazy argument is they are they need a striker they need a number nine you know they were the second highest scorers in the league last season I, yes. I don't think that is I think actually if anything it's it's a midfielder that they might might need uh, by the way John in uh, Liverpool has got in touch replicate kits are for kids they shouldn't even make adult sizes yes John so it's one nil to Rory on there we one. go John John <laughs> in Liverpool very uh, clearly a sartorial yeah. man somebody John, who knows what he's talking about what do you think John in Liverpool wears to the football no it's something quite cool John. John in Liverpool to the football. He's got a season ticket in the cop. Yeah. And he would wear What's he, he wearing? I think he's putting a lot of effort in. Yeah. I, I think he's wearing he's wearing a good solid brand. I, yeah, I agree. Like what? 
No, what's he going to go for? What's what's the, I don't know the scouts' culture as well as I, as well as I should. Well, right, John, give us another text. Lacoste. Tell us what you wear He'll have a, a Lacoste polo top in the summer. <laughs> yeah, no, that's bang on, mm. bang on. Uh, I reckon I reckon you've got that uh, spot on. Uh, by the way, Rory, of course, the Olympics is getting uh, fully underway with the opening ceremony tomorrow night. We're going to bring you that live on uh, Talk Sport as well, as well as all of the games as well. Very, very exciting. Um, but a big story coming out of Team GB uh, involving Sir Andy Murray uh, this week, who said that the Olympics will be the final tennis that he plays before he retires uh, and he's going to be playing doubles so he's not in the singles he's won two Olympic golds before actually in the singles in 2012 and 2016 but he's going to be playing doubles uh, with Dan Evans uh, and Dan actually uh, caught up with our Olympic reporter John Cushing a bit earlier today he asked how uh, him and Murray came together as a team ahead of their doubles competition at the Olympics you know in doubles we have I feel like we've we're going to do a real good job out there and it's going to be uh, you know something you know we're really putting our effort into and priorities into. You mentioned the doubles. Mm. Was it a case of who wants to play with Sir Andy Murray? Did you just put your hand up? Uh, no, but we spoke about it. Andy actually, you know, we spoke, me and Andy spoke about it last year in the last summer to try and play a lot together. And last summer and we got, we did play some tournaments, but he got a little hurt and then we couldn't play. And so it was on the, the cards, but then it sort of ended up we wasn't sure if we was going to get in, but in the end we got in and, you know, I think we, we've done a good job so far of preparing and, you know, practising, you know, the, the match situations together and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's all positive. Yeah, there's uh, Dan Evans who'll be partnering Andy Murray in his, his final spin in, in his uh, professional tennis career. I mean, Rory, what a legend, by the way. Uh, two Wimbledon wins, the first British man to win it. Uh, since 1936, Fred mm. Perry before that. Do you reckon John in Liverpool wears Fred Perry actually to the football? Definitely would be, he would definitely own it, it some, be some there, Fred it? garments. <laughs> it's, it, that, yeah. it's in his wardrobe, isn't it's it? It's in his wardrobe, it's absolutely. In his wardrobe. Yeah. Um, but, but I mean, what, a, what an amazing career, because especially when you consider who he's been up against during that time, some people call him, you know, one of the most unlucky uh, athletes in sport because he's come up against Nadal, Federer and Djokovic, the big three. I mean, those three have won 66 major mm. singles titles between them. That's absolutely ridiculous. So when you put that, in there, and you and you add in those gold medals as well as well that he's won uh, at the Olympic Games. Where do you think Andy Murray ranks as a as a British athlete? Is he one of the greatest of all time? No, no, I don't. I don't believe so. No, no, nowhere near. In fact, I think I think he's certainly a tennis icon. He might be. He, if you want to talk about where Andy Murray ranks, and you want to put him towards the very top, I think it's where does he rank in tennis? I think it's very specific to tennis. As soon as you make it broader, as soon as you start talking about the greatest British athlete of all time, I don't think he's anywhere near the top ten. Really? Despite, I mean, I could just said there, not since 1936 a British man had won at Wimbledon. No, but that's more of an indictment of the state of British tennis, isn't it? Managed to win it twice up against that opposition as well. Yeah, whatever whatever opposition you want to talk about, though, there'll always be very significant opposition standing in your way. That's Mm. the nature of competitive sport at the very elite level. There will always be somebody better. We're talking about three of the best ever. Yes, you know. yes, of course. And if it and if it wasn't for if it wasn't for Rivaldo, David Beckham would have won a Ballon d'Or. There's always there's always someone else. There's always someone standing in your way. So I think that Andy Murray is a, a British tennis so where, icon. Where is he? Isn't, you said nowhere near. No, I don't. I wouldn't have he... him in the top. I really wouldn't have him in the top ten. You wouldn't have him in the top ten. No, really. Around about where do you, where do you see Phil number... Taylor? I'm being serious here. Where Phil, do you see? Well, I mean, Phil Taylor is an icon. Where do you see Phil Taylor? Where do you see Ronnie Phil O'Sullivan? Phil Taylor's in, you... in the top ten. Ronnie as, O'Sullivan? as is Ronnie O'Sullivan. I would but have I both would... of those ahead of Murray. No, you wouldn't. I would. Would you? Yeah, I would. Really? I genuinely, I genuinely would. And I wouldn't have either of those at the very top either, by the way. But I think that I think to exert to to get to that level in tennis is is harder. I mean, I mean, you can't take away from what O'Sullivan and Taylor have both achieved. Mm. I'm with you on that. But to get to the level that Murray did in tennis is harder, and therefore he is higher. Why is it? Why forever. is it harder than snooker? But well, because, firstly, because of the the physical aspect of it all. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest here. You yeah. know, when we're looking at, at Phil Taylor and O'Sullivan, you know, absolute incredible talent. But actually, in terms of the the physical exertion, I mean, look at what Andy Murray's done to his his body in in order to reach that elite level. Look at what level Phil Taylor has done to his. <laughs> He's done a great job. I tell you that. <laughs> He's done a great job. But I, I, I firstly feel that that is a, a huge part of it, and also, you know, 
tennis is is one of the most popular sports in the world. It is one of the the hardest to get to the very top of. And yeah. he, he's managed to get to that, or, or you know, a similar level. I think, to that. Look, you can you can talk about where he ranks. I think, and that is a huge testament and credit to the man. The fact that we can discuss where does he rank in terms of the in the pantheon of British sporting icons, mm. British sporting greats. To have your name even mentioned in this conversation is a huge compliment. Yeah, huge. So I'm not doing him a disservice here. I think that his name rightly belongs in the list. But when we're talking about the very top, the absolute upper echelon the the creme de la creme he isn't he isn't he isn't better he isn't a better sportsman than than Ronnie O'Sullivan in my opinion he isn't a better sportsman than Joe Calzaghe in my opinion he isn't a better sportsman than Phil Taylor I think there are I think there are a lot of other alternatives where I would say he's better and I still haven't said who I think is the best mm, 0371722334 where does Andy Murray rank for you in terms of uh, the greatest British athlete of all time uh, you know Rory said that Phil Taylor and Ronnie O'Sullivan are ahead of him and Joe Calzaghe so I can't I can't I mean Joe Calzaghe is, is, is a closer argument is a closer argument because we've already talked about it it's that physical aspect of things I don't think I would have O'Sullivan and Taylor uh, despite what they've achieved I don't think I'd have them but over, they're, over but they're the very best though they, They're I mean, the very know, best. But... Andy Murray was never the very best. Well, he, yes, he was. He won Wimbledon twice. Yeah, he, oh, yeah, yeah. And he you won can, the US Open. I know, but you can... Do... And he won two gold medals. No, but... but he will never go down as being the very best. Ronnie O'Sullivan will go down as being the very best. He'll be among the best. Ronnie O'Sullivan? No, uh, Andy Murray. Yeah, but Andy there's Murray. a huge difference between being among and being a competitor, being somebody who's a contender, mm. rather than being somebody who is outright the best I don't see how you can be the best British sportsman in your field when you aren't even the best in your field mm. 03717 uh, we've had some texts on the kits by the way how's it going Rory uh, we've had one saying uh, as soon as a, uh, the player on the back of the shirt is younger than you that's the time you stop wearing the shirt quite like that mm. it's a good shout uh, there are two exceptions according to this texter uh, on holiday so you can show off your colours abroad or when playing five aside. I think five aside. Five aside is fine. Five aside is fine. If you have to wear a kit at any point and you want to wear it at five aside, that's absolutely fine. I think with the with the abroad thing, I understand the shout. I quite like it, but I think you should get some shorts. Mm, interesting. Stuff. Some shorts, yeah, rather like then you're not then you're not wearing a kit like a child. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just get some shorts. Yeah, why not? Why not? On AM, on DAB, via the Talksport app, and on your smart speaker, Talksport.